हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम कंटिन्यूइंग रीडिंग द कमेंट्री ऑन श्रीमद भगवद गीता बाय पूज्य गुरुदेव स्वामी चिन्मयानंदा जी वी आर इन द एटी सेकेंड पोस्ट विल बी स्टार्टिंग द गीता चैप्टर सेवन टुडे टाइटल ज्ञान विज्ञान योगा दैट इज नॉलेज एंड विजडम फर्स्ट आई विल रीड द इंट्रोडक्शन वॉट गुरुदेव हैज गिवन द एटीन चैप्टर्स ऑफ द गीता इन द अरेंजमेंट ऑफ देर आइडियाज फॉल इन टू थ्री सेट्स ऑफ सिक्स चैप्टर्स ईच दिस इज द कंक्लूजन अराइव एट बाई मेनी गीता स्टूडेंट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू दैम गीता बींग ए बुक which reinterprets the very essence of the vedic law in the entire scheme of its discussions the divine song expresses the truth of the mahavakya that thou art mahavakyas are four in number one taken from each of the four vedas and they form four definite pointers all indicating the one and the same sacred truth which the vedas unanimously declare of these that thou art tat tvam asi is called the instruction message upadesha vakya this crisp sentence summarizes the entire vedic law and its philosophy and therefore voluminous commentators commentaries are necessary to elucidate the true significance of each of these three short words let us recollect the mahavakyas number 1 is the consciousness is brahma pragyanam brahma which is taken from rigveda this is the lakshana vakya that thou art tat tvam asi it is the upadesha vakya taken from samaveda this atman is brahman i am atma brahma this is called anusandhana vakya taken from atharvana veda and the last one i am brahman aham brahmasmi this is called anubhava vakya taken from yajurveda according to some reviewers of the gita the first section of the divine song comprising the opening six chapters explains the significance of the term thou tvam in the mahavakya the second section opening with the seventh chapter and cl- concluding with the 12th explains the term that tat in the same declaration from this chapter onwards therefore we will be gaining a glue true glimpse of the goal of the spiritual science as indicated in the hindu cultural tradition the last six chapters naturally express the meaning of the term art asi and explain the identity of that essence and thou significance this division of the great textbook does not necessarily mean that there is a diverse between the earlier section constituted by the first six chapters and the subsequent sections there is a criticism against the gita that it is a haphazard compilation of the important and attractive stanzas that were available at the time of its compilation rather hastily done by perhaps more than one editor this is generally voiced by those who have made only a superficial study of this divine song when we give enough thought and sincerely try to follow the trend of this spiritual discussion between the master and the student we can easily understand the intimate relationship which exists not only between the stanza but also in the logical development of thought from chapter to chapter the previous chapter not only gave the technique of self realization through the methods of concentration and meditation but also concluded with krishna's own
personal opinion upon who exactly was the noblest among the different seekers pursuing the different paths. According to the Lord of Brindavan, a meditator who tries to concentrate his mind upon the self is superior to those who strive to deny all sense enjoyment to this body. That is, they are called tapasvis or to those who make deep and learned investigations into the scriptural literature who is called jnani or to those who have dedicated themselves to selfless service of the society those are karmis the flute bearer had again tried to express his opinion as to who among the meditators is the most noble it was declared in the concluding stanza of the previous chapter that of all the meditators the one who has successfully merged his mind in the nature of the pure consciousness through the path of single pointed meditation is the highest and the dearest naturally there would be a possible doubt in the mind of darjuna as to how a limited a mortal mind and intellect of a finite creature could ever embrace and comprehend the entire limitless infinite in order to remove his doubt krishna opens this particular chapter now under our pen with a promise that he will explain to arjuna the entire science both in its theoretical and speculative aspects and clear all his possible doubt on the subject indeed for exhaustiveness in treatment and thoroughness in exposition there is perhaps no other religious textbook that can stand a favorable comparison with the gita in this sense of the term we should appreciate the gita not only as a textbook of our philosophy but also as a literary masterpiece of beauty and erudition in the world's literature now let's get into the text shloka number 1 of the 7th chapter shri bhagavan uvacha maya saktamana partha योगम युजन्मदाश्रय असंशय सामग्रमासी तत्शुणु मयि ऑन मी आसक्तमना विथ माइंड इंटेंट पार्थ O Partha, Yogam, Yoga, Yunjan, Practicing, Madashrayaha, Taking Refuge in Me, Asamshayam, Without Doubt, Samagram, Holy, Maam, Me, Yatha, How, Gyasyasi, Shalnu, Tad, That, Shunu, Here, With the Mind, Intent on Me, O Partha, Practicing Yoga, And Taking Refuge in Me, How, thou shall without doubt know me fully that do thou hear it would be naturally the doubt of all seekers specially before they enter the seat of meditation as to how it was possible for a limited mind to understand or embrace the unlimited this doubt can come to such seekers who try only for intellectual appreciation of the philosophy of vedanta but all seekers could only be in the beginning mere scholarly students of the vedantic literature this is an unavoidable stage in the path of knowledge the science of the vedanta exhaustively deals with this problem and tries to explain how the mind when made to meditate upon the infinite comes to transcend its own limitations and experience the infinite here krishna introducing the theme to be dealt with the 
dealt with the next six chapters guarantees Arjuna that he will explain the entire science and technique which will clearly show how a meditator by fixing his integrated mind upon the contemplation of the nature of the self can come to experience the divine. From this chapter onwards, the term mind is to be understood not as a debilitated and disintegrated mind, but as an integrated mind properly tutored to walk implicitly obeying the will of the discriminative intellect. When such a mind is firmly established in full concentration upon the divine nature of its godly potentialities, the seeker evolves double quick. The logic of this inward development it is promised would be the theme of this section. Now listen to what I am going to say as to how you also, thus acting, will without doubt know me in full, possessed of infinite greatness, strength, grace and other attributes. Shloka number 2 Jnanam teham sa vijnanam idam vakshamya sheshataha yajyatva neha bhūya unyaj jnatavyam avashishyate Jnanam, indirect knowledge of shastras, te to the aham, I, sa vijnanam combined with the realization that is the direct knowledge of the Atma through experience, idam, this vakshami will declare asheshataha in full yat which gyatva having known na not iha here bhuyaha more anyata anything else gyatavyam what ought to be known avishishyate remains. I shall declare to thee in full this knowledge combined with the realization which being known nothing more here remains to be known as an introduction to this section constituted of the following six chapters krishna promises that he will be delivering here under the entire hindu philosophy both the speculative and the practical in such an exhaustive fashion that nothing more shall remain to be added which was worth knowing. It is always the practice in preserving all patent secrets that the owner of the secret only gives out either the theoretical explanation or if at all he gives the details of the details of them to himself so that he may still have the monopoly of the right knowledge in all its since entirety. A modern example of the above can be found in the explanation of the atom secrets. The atom scientists give us some theoretical explanation of the nuclear science, the constitution of the energy particles in an atom and even openly give out the mathematical calculations of the enormous amount of energy contained in each atom. But except for the rudimentary principles of construction of the atom bomb, they do not give the complete secret to all. Similarly, here it will be doubted that the technique and science of perfection may not be exhaustively and completely given out by the Lord in the Gita as vividly as it is in the Upanishads. This doubt is quite justified because the Gita comes in the midst of the great classic of the world, the Mahabharata. Here, Krishna endorses and guarantees that the Gita is a total and exhaustive summary of the philosophy of the Upanishads and though it reads as simple and elementary in its import and deeper significance, this divine song exhausts the entire knowledge. According to Shankara, speculative knowledge is jnana and actual experience of the perfection is vijnana. Here Krishna is promising 
that he shall not only deliver to Arjuna the theoretical explanation of the art of divine life, but also during the very discourse take him to the highest peak of self-rediscovery. This may look rather unbelievable, but unlike yoga and other methods of philosophies in India, Vedanta is not an indirect process in as much as after the study of the Shastra, it is not necessary for a fit student to retire into jungle to practice and bring the experience of perfection into his cognition. During the very discourse, if the student is mentally fit to walk along with the teacher step by step and follow carefully the logic and significance of his explanation, he can gain glimpses of realization during the very hours of his study. It is because of this that Vedanta is taught only to a student who has been made fit for this flight to the beyond. If inwardly an individual student is perfectly integrated and if the student can maintain continuously his adventurous thirst to experience the reality, that student in his attempt to identify himself with the thought and the spirit of his teacher's discourses can ultimately come to revel in the experience of the very goal that is indicated by the Vedanta. Self-realization is instantaneous during the understanding of scriptures gained through the teacher taught discussion. If Vedanta is thus a complete science and the experience of the divinity of the self can be had even during the very teacher taught discussion, how is it that self-realized masters are so rare in the world? Listen what Krishna says in shloka number 3. Manushyanam sahastreshu kashchit Yadati Siddhaye Yatatamapi Siddhanam Kaschin Mam Veti Tatvataha Manushanam of men Sastreshu among thousand Kaschita someone Yatati strives Siddhaye for perfection Yatatam of the striving ones Api even Siddhanam of the successful ones, kaschita, someone, maam, me, veti, knows, tattvataha, in essence. Among thousands of men, one perchance strives for perfection. Even among those successful strivers, only one perchance knows me in essence. Hearing this seemingly outrageous statement from Krishna, that Vedanta or Self-Realization is as easy as listening to a short storytelling, Arjuna got confused because this assertion of the Lord conflicted with his tutored ideas regarding the Hindu theory of Self-Perfection. Naturally, his eyes, as it were, bulge out, expressing his bewilderment. Krishna has therefore to explain why, in spite of the fact that self-realization was so simple and easy, it did not come within the experience of everyone? This stanza explains why the majority still choose to remain in the area of ignorance, to weep and to sigh, and are not able to walk into the lit-up arena of perfect knowledge and inward equanimity. The idea that Vedantic realization and knowledge can come to the experience of only a rare few has been repeatedly emphasized in different portion of the spiritual literature in India by different masters in different expressions. We were told previously how the very theoretical side of the Vedanta is heard and understood as a marvel. In the Upanishads also, the same idea has been very clearly expressed by the rishis. Here, however, Krishna shifts the entire responsibility for not realizing the self 
upon the individual seeker himself and attributes it entirely to the sadhaka's lack of self application vedanta being a subjective science it is not only sufficient that we must know how to eradicate our weaknesses and cultivate our inward strength but we must also live up to those ideals and try to bring about the necessary readjustments in ourselves very few can discover in themselves this necessary urge to evolve of the thousand that hear intelligently and perhaps understand all the theory and the text of vedanta only a few sincerely apply themselves to live fully the vedantic way of life even among a thousand such sincere seekers only a rare few come to know me in my real nature the chances are that when this vedantic way of life is perfectly explained by the sadguru to a student who is seemingly attending with all enthusiasm sincerity and concentration he may raise himself up to perhaps the very gates of truth but there he himself may come to bar his own entry into the within some imperceptible vanity or unsuspected desire is sufficient there to exile him from himself in this sense there is a wealth of meaning in lord christ declaration that a camel can pass through the eye of a needle more easily than a rich man through the gates of heaven the riches are not the worldly wealth but the individual's mental vasana wealth unless the mind is perfectly naked it has no entry into the bliss of the truth by thus showing the extreme difficulty of attaining self realization it is not intended that the students of vedanta should feel disappointed and desperate the stanza should not be read as pessimistic declaration krishna in the entire mahabharata is painted as a living embodiment of cheer and laughter a man of inexhaustible hope and joy of all the godly personalities in the history of the religious literature of the world if at all there be one character that has not as much as felt a mental depression it is the flute bearer of rindavan such a master especially when he is trying to encourage his friend who is in despondency cannot be considered as offering arjuna a dose of extra pessimism viewing the stanza in the light of the krishna spirit it only means that rare indeed are people who come to study sincerely and get a true glimpse of the vedanta literature and only a very low percentage of these again can discover in themselves the necessary mental stamina intellectual vision and the physical forbearance to live that life of truth and purity in the world since arjuna and all the students of the gita are such rare souls they represent the community of evolvers to them krishna promises that he can through his divine song not only deliver the speculative part of the philosophy of vedanta but also practically hand over chances to live subjectively vital moments of vivid inward experience of the self having prepared the hearer for the teaching by inducing in him a taste for it the lord will proceed in further shlokas to how to go about it which we will take it next time thanks for listening Take care. Hari Om.